for our transgressions He was bruised for our iniquities The chastisement of our peace was upon Him And with His stripes we are healed Bless the Lord, oh my soul And forget not all His benefits Hallelujah. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Can we just say hallelujah this morning? Can we just say thank you, Jesus? Thank you for waking us up. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you, Lord, for letting us have a church, a sanctuary, where we can come and just worship you. We thank you, God. This morning, as we enter into service, we're going to sing an old familiar song, and we want you to get on board with us as we sing and give God the glory. Amen. Amen. It's too loud. Y'all sing with me, okay? Well, I started not to tell it when I found Jesus. Started not to tell it when I found Jesus. Started not to tell it when I found Jesus. Jesus is my only friend. Well, I started not to tell it when I found Jesus.
when all my other friends walk away. We thank you, Jesus. This morning, we're going to continue our service with scripture and prayer, and then we're going to go further and praise the Lord. Thank you, church. We will be reading the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 45 through 49. Is that better? Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power on high. Father God, I come at this hour. Father, we seek your presence here this morning. Jesus. Let us open our minds and heart up Jesus. this morning so that we may receive the word. Yes. We give you all the honor yes. and all the praises this morning. Hey God. Father, we can't thank you enough for yes. what you have done. Yes. Your grace and mercy yes, sir. have been placed upon us. Thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Father. Thank you. As we move today in a way that you only you would have us to move. Yeah. We give you the honor. Yes, God. We give you all the glory. Yes, God. In your precious Son, Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise.
God from praising him.
I need it most. Jesus stepped right in. As our young folk retreat to the back of our children's church. Why don't you reminisce in your mind and think about when you needed it most, how Jesus stepped right in. Am I helping somebody? When I need it most. Johnny, one more round, because somebody didn't get it. Just one more small round. Oh, he steps in, 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 I can call on Jesus, I can call him in the morning, late in the midnight hour, I go down. some praise in this place. Come on, give it to him like you know, like you know that you know that you know that when Jesus stepped right in, everything gonna be all right. Amen, amen, amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and we all ought to rejoice and be glad in it. We give God praise for you today. I can see you and you can see me and I'm eternally grateful because things could have been another way. I know I'm telling the truth about it. We here today on God's grace and his mercy and the favor that he has on our lives. So we say thank you. Amen. I'm glad to be in the land of the dead, going to the land of the living. Oh, I'm glad today because God did not give me what I deserve. He kept on looking beyond my faults and taking care of all my needs. I'm glad today because he kept me out of harm's way. I'm glad today because he put a hedge of protection around me and you. And because of that, we're here today in this Bethel spot coming to give God the praise now if you will bow your head with me oh father we thank you for once again allowing us to come into your presence ask that your anointing fall afresh on all of us father we come today because we are in need of prayer 
Father, we come today because the world is in trouble. We come, Father, to maximize you. We come to make you big in our lives. We come, Father, to turn our will over to your will. So, Father, we thank you. And we count it a privilege and an opportunity to come and serve you. So, Father, touch our hearts now. Anoint afresh. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm happy to see I'm happy to see y'all today. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that God has us here at this hour and, and this day. I'm grateful because when we needed him most, he stepped right on in. But we couldn't see our way, didn't know our way, misunderstood our way. Trying to seek our purpose, he stepped right in. And you purposely and divinely set right here in this place today for his glory. I know sometimes it seemed hard, it seemed rough, it seemed tough. But God got you right where you are supposed to be. And I'm grateful. There's a word. There is a word. And I know God going to preach this word. Blocker can't preach it. God got to preach this word. Our scriptures found in Matthew the eighth chapter, verse fourteen and fifteen. Matthew fourteen and fifteen. Close it. Matthew eighth chapter, verse fourteen and fifteen. And it reads, now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and served him. You may be seated. It says, so he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and served them. Them is plural. She served them. Give me my give me give me give me my subject. And he served them. When Jesus, Miss Myrtle, heals the hole in your soul. When Jesus, Miss Cynthia, heals the holes in your soul. I, I should put an S on that holes because we have more than one hole. I'm not talking about a physical hole. I'm talking about a spiritual hole in your soul. Reverend Young, Matthew, also known as Levi, is the author of this book. Matthew Deacon Cartwright was a Jewish tax collector who became one of Jesus' 12 disciples. He came to prove conclusively that Jesus is the Messiah, the eternal king. Now, Minister Bryant, this message is designed to let us know that we no longer, no longer have to carry around the pains of yesterday because God has healed all wounds. God has healed the holes in your soul. Now as we come to terms with our lives and try to get an understanding of why some folk operate dysfunctionally, I would like to suggest to you it is because they have a hole in their soul. It lets us, let's consider that it all started with Adam and Eve in the garden. When they disobeyed the law, they became, come here, Sister Grant, wounded emotionally 
because they were deceived by Satan and it brought about their hurt and it left a hole in their soul. It brought about Tanya, hurt, guilt, shame, and remorse. And that left all of us, Carl, subject to become wounded and have holes in our soul. It left us a mental and emotional blow that left a hole in our soul. Can I help somebody? Wounds are not often detected until one's behavior gets out of hand. Somebody got a hole in their soul. See, wounds, dictatory can be external or internal. Am I going somewhere? Where you at, Deacon Lowe? Wounds usually heal from the inside out. There are some folk who declare that time heals all wounds. But I, I beg the devil because some of us are still wounded from what someone said or did yesterday. And it has left a hole in our soul. Now, Deacon Styles, I know you're not here, but I know you're looking. But, but as we look at the text, it will suggest to us that Jesus can heal the hole in your soul. The text says when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw Peter's mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. It's right there in the book. The text says he touched her hand and the fever left her. That would suggest to us, Erica, that Jesus can heal the hole in your soul. See, I'm reminded of how Jesus healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, and made the lame man walk and the dumb talk. See, Jesus can heal the hole in your soul. Y'all gonna talk to me today in this place. See, the text will have us to believe that Jesus specializes in healing the physical and the spiritually wounded to reveal his power to us. See, Jesus, he can heal the whole, I'm trying to put that in somebody's mind. Jesus can heal the hole in your soul. Peter's mother-in-law physical wounds brought about her spiritual healing. And sometimes God has to get our attention. Uh-oh. Right. Where you at, Janice? Through our pain. Right. God gets our attention through our pain. Right. Now, in light of the fact, Miss Doris, that many times our recovery will depend on our capacity to be honest about our situation. If y'all don't mind, Allow me a few moments to share three things that I found in the text that let you know that Jesus will heal the hole in your soul. The, the first thing I found, I found, Deacon Toe, is we must address the matter. Huh? We, we got to address the matter. And then the second thing, Brother Darrell, I found is you got to accept the situation. And when we address the matter, accept the situation, we must serve him when we heal. Can we work with it? Huh? Jesus want to heal. Tell somebody. Jesus want to heal the hole in your soul. I'm trying to get y'all to talk to me today. See, see, there are some things in life that we must address if we want our situation to change. See, oftentimes in life, Lily, we cover up our pain. We cover up our frustration and our hurts because we have a hole in our soul. Huh? If we have a hole in our soul, come in, Miss Kathy, because we didn't address the core of the issue. In other words, we put stuff on top of stuff. See, when the first wound had healed, we steady stack other stuff on other stuff and it caused an infection. Come in, Ms. Maul. 
that spreads throughout our every area of our life. Uh, in our text, Linda B, we will see Jesus addressing this woman's situation out of a need. But the text does not tell us whether she addressed anyone about her illness. It didn't say it. It just says when Jesus came. It said when Jesus came. So, so Vaughn, that let me know when Jesus come, he will hear the whole. May I suggest that sometimes the way to address the matter is through faith. Sometimes addressing things makes matter better if we do it in the right spirit. This woman in the text didn't seem to complain because she evidently had a personal relationship with Jesus. And she knew that if she just trusted and believed, Jesus would address the matter in his own way. Because he is the one who can heal the whole in your soul. So I start by to let somebody know that when we address the matter, we must wait upon the Lord because he will renew our strength. And that will help us accept this situation, which is the second thing that I in the text. I learned through life's journey that acceptance is the key to all of our problems. I say acceptance is the key to all our problems. Except in this text is the reality of a process. In other words, Peter's mother-in-law accepted her situation because she understood that some things were beyond her control. Sometimes the one thing that keeps us wounded is our ability to accept the situation. Sometimes, come here, Sonia. The one thing that keeps us wounded is our ability to not accept the situation. May I suggest you that if we accept our situation, we can begin the healing process because we no longer have to camouflage to hide the real problem. Stop wearing the mask not literally wearing the mask, but take that mask of confusion off your face. Because Jesus can heal the hole in your soul. The text says he touched her hand and the fever left her. The text is telling us that when we accept our situation, it shows a sign of humility that sometimes, oh Lord have mercy, we, a sign of humility and sometimes Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes our wounds are designed to draw us closer to God. The Bible tells us that, that Paul, he had a thorn in his side. Even though Paul asked God to remove it and God refused because God said, my grace is sufficient. He accepted his situation, but it didn't stop him from serving God. Said, may I help somebody? By letting you know that God don't accept our excuses. God does not accept our excuses. But he will bless our situation. Because the Bible declared that we can do all things through Christ which strengthens us. In other words, when he heals us, we must serve him. Which is the third thing that I found in the text. I found this last point in the text after he healed the woman it says that we must serve him when we heal. The Bible tells us that whom much is given much is required. May I suggest to you that our response should be that of a gratitude and service to my God because God wants to heal the hole in your soul because God he deserves the glory and when Jesus healed us from whatever infliction that we may have we must understand 
that it's not about us, but sometimes it's a test of our faith. And as we close this text, I want somebody to leap, leap. I want somebody to leap. I want somebody to leap with joy because when I looked at the text, I learned that Peter's mother-in-law appreciated what God had done for her because the text says that she got up. I said she got up. Y'all didn't hear me. I said she got up and began to serve them. So may I suggest to you that your healing, don't you miss this Janice? Your healing, your healing will depend on your attitude. In other words, we must learn to get out of ourselves and give back what God has given to us. The Bible says that we must serve him with gladness. In other words, give freely of yourself so we can be a blessing to someone else. The Bible tells us that the harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a few. Brothers and sisters, when we look back over our lives, we must remind ourselves that had it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Don't take your healing for granted because God did not have to heal the hole in your soul because he didn't have to do it, but he did. We must not let our pride, I say we must not let our pride and our ego separate us from our service to mankind by thinking that we are better than someone else because the Bible says that God has, I say God has, God has no respect of person. In other words, the Bible says in Isaiah 53, 5, say that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities so that lets us know that Jesus, he came to heal the hole in your soul. Am I right about it? When he came down from glory, Jesus, he wrapped himself with a human body so he could identify with our pain. He could identify that some of us will be left with a hole in our soul. If you don't mind, just think back over your life and give God, and give God some praise for bringing you back from a hopeless state of mind and body. Thank him for putting purpose in your view. Thank him for allowing you to rise above your circumstances. I want you to thank him. Thank him for grace and mercy. Thank God for grace and mercy. Thank God for stopping by your location and he saw the hole in your soul. I want you to thank God right now for what it is. The brothers and sisters, we need to thank God. We need to thank God for sending his son Jesus as being, a, as being our divine physician. I say he's our divine physician. Jesus will, I say Jesus will, he will heal the whole of worry. I say Jesus will, he will heal the whole of worry. Jesus will, he will heal the whole of doubt. Jesus will, he will heal the whole of hatred. Jesus will, he will heal the whole of gossip. Jesus will, he will heal a whole of misunderstanding. 
Jesus will. He will heal the whole of a lost loved one. And when he heals you, and when Jesus heals you, you will have a peace that surpasses all understanding. When Jesus heals a hole in your soul, you'll be able, you'll be able to walk by faith and not by sight. When Jesus heals a hole in your soul, you'll be able to put the past behind you and press forward to high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. And the only requirement, Miss Loretta, for your soul to be healed is that you accept Jesus as your personal Savior and believe and believe that he has the power to heal a hole in your soul. So if you are here today and still struggling, I dare you today, I dare you today, James Williams, to try Dr. Jesus. Try Dr. Jesus because Jesus is the one who came down from Florida in two generations. I say the hole to hear the hole. I say to hear a hole to hear a hole in your soul so that you and I he came to hear a hole in your soul so that you and I can enjoy the abundant life. Jesus came. Jesus came, Jesus came, he came, he died, he died there on, but he rose again on that third day morning, he rose on the third day morning, and he had all power in his hand, he had power in his hand to heal the whole in your soul if you still think you got a hole in your soul why don't you take it to dr jesus take it to dr jesus and let him do surgery on that hole in your soul he can tie it up he can wrap it up he can sew it up he can fix it up and he will put your foot on a solid foundation but you got to try jesus and accept him as your savior. He want to hear the hole in your soul. See me, Barbara Collin. Most of us, most of us look good from observation. We dress up real nice. But some of us walking around with not one hole, but many holes in our soul. And Jesus, Mary's baby boy, y'all know him, the Prince of Peace, the Lily of the Valley, he come to heal the hole in your soul. Some holes in our souls are of our own making. Some holes we inherited from generation down through generation. But Jesus, he came to heal the hole in your soul. See, I've discovered, can I talk about me? That I made choices based on the hole that was in my soul. See, I was trying to fill that hole with things and stuff. I, I did not know that when Jesus came, he placed his spirit in me, and that was the only thing that could fill the hole in my soul. And, and Jesus want to heal that hole in your soul. So give Jesus a try. You can't go wrong. Some holes have left permanent scars. You know, the truth of the matter is, 
even when Jesus heals the hole in our soul, we have to ask him to take it out of our mind because we are replay it over and over and over again. And some things are reminders of the hole in your soul. But we serve a God who is able. Am I telling the truth about it? Let go of what it was and think about what it is and let Jesus heal the hole in your soul. Hallelujah. I'm gone now. I've been through the fire. I've been through the flood. Broken in pieces and left all alone. The doors of the church are open. But through it all, God bless me. The in our souls, y'all. Through it all, God, God kept me. He's able to and I you. still have a prayer the the inside of me. Everyone. If you don't want to stay here, yes, we'll take I it wherever you want to go. We'll take it wherever you want to go. Inside me. But this is that time when Jesus is calling on you to come. Come. Shift your position. Come to me. I've been through I'll give you rest. Fire. Whatever it is you need, God I've got I've been it. through the flood. Broken in pieces. There may be one now. You can come by water baptism, Christian experience, or you can come watch Cal. Don't let this day pass you by. There may be one struggling with the hole in your soul. There may be one now. There may be one. Just come as you are. Come as you are. Come as you are. The healing process begins with you. The decision that you make on this day. Broken through the flood. Broken in pieces. And left all alone. But through it all, God bless me. Through it all, God kept me. And I still have a praise inside of me. Yes, I still have a praise inside of me. It's now time for our tithes and offering, and we would ask that both sides would please stand, face the wall, and begin from the rear, and we have ushers that will guide you around and let you know when it's time for your row to come around. Thank you, and be blessed.
let's pray. Lord, we just want... Lord, we thank you for having us to come out this morning and serve the Lord one more time. Lord, we thank you for traveling grace that you're able to make it here, Lord, in your name. Now, Lord, we just pray for the ones that didn't have it to give this morning, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this offering, Lord, and let it be used for the purpose that you would have it to be used. Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our announcement for this morning are as follows. The Macedonian Annual Summer Revival will begin um, tomorrow, August 15th through Wednesday, August um, 17th at 7 p.m. nightly. Monday night, we will have Reverend Marcella Glover. She's the pastor of Clark Grove Baptist Church. Tuesday night, we'll have Reverend Willie Calloway. He's the pastor of Oak Grove Baptist Church. And um, Wednesday night, we'll have Reverend Victor Thomas, the pastor of Greater Mount Canaan Baptist Church. Monday, August 22nd through um, 25th, NBC Travel Ministry will be traveling to Birmingham, Alabama. The bus will depart the church at 8.30 a.m. and to those who are going should arrive at the church by 7.30. Sunday, August 28th, which is the fourth Sunday, we're asking members to wear their football t-shirts and jerseys. On Saturday, September the 10th, is the sixth annual recovery and transformation celebration. It will be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Savannah Bluff Lock and Dam. The theme will be, we, we do recover and much more. This is for the entire CSRA and the surrounding counties. And if you need more information, you can reach Minister Henry Bryant. His number is on the flyer, the flyer's out front, and there's some flyers on the side. Amen. Amen. Anyone wanting to ride the band, the Sunday services, please call the church, 706-863-3405. A reminder, every Monday is Needless Monday, Wednesday is Wordless Wednesday. Discipleship classes and um, will be held every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. All church members are invited to attend. And don't forget about a time for prayer, prayer line. It's held every Tuesday at 7 p.m. by Macedonia Baptist Church, Pastor Daryl Blocker, Brother Henry Bryant, he's the host. The phone number is 605-313-5675 and access code is 114-6301, hashtag. And you get a copy of the announcement, it'll have the phone numbers and the, and the access line. Okay, our tithes and offerings, they can still be placed in the box in the front of the church. And Cash App is um, dollar sign to Big M Martinez, Give the five, Macedonia Baptist Church, 3606 Old Ferry Road. And these are the announcements for this morning. Thank you. Let the church say amen. Ah, God wants to heal the hole in your soul. <clears throat> Unbelievable. How God loved us so much that he put on that human body and went out to go Gophus Hill and suffered much to heal the hole in our soul. That's a good God we serve, and we ought to praise him every time we think about how good he's been. Amen. At this time, I would like to uplift our, our sick and our shut-in. Um, Deacon Arthur Terry is on our sick and shut-in list. Deaconess Viola Henderson. Deaconess Johnny Mae Styles, and I'm going to attach her husband, Deacon Benson Styles, to that. Deaconess Carol Roscoe, Brother Daryl Dandy, Sister Margaret Terry, Sister Flossie Halls, and Sister Charlene Overton, 
Brother Lamar Smith and Brother Robert Smith, Sister Vivian Tompkins. And I'm going to ask, before I do finish my announcement, is that we have an altar call prayer. Not right now, but I'm going to let you know, give you the sign. I want to say, Macedonia, I love y'all. And I thank you so much for all your support. We had a blast in Allendale County on Thursday night. Amen. I thank those who, who pressed their way to come. I know it seemed like it was a long ride, but... But Deacon Cartwright took them on down through there. Yes, and then Myrtle, I didn't have to throw nobody off the van. <laughs> now see, Deacon told they gonna get you. You stay with me the rest of the day. Amen, amen. I thank y'all so much for y'all support. And I did not say enough about the trip to North Carolina on the fifth Sunday. I was kind of distracted. I was overwhelmed, too, because if I'd have talked about it, I probably would have cried. Um, Sixty-some-odd people. How many we had? Sixty-seven people. Leaving Augusta, Georgia. You know, y'all represented the church as a whole. And y'all sure represented me. I sure thank you. Hallelujah. You know, and I just want to just thank y'all for what you do. We love y'all too. I can't say enough about this church. See, when God places you, when he places you, he divinely do it. When he places you, it can't be manipulated by me or nobody else because God placed it. God divinely placed us together. And as a result of that, he's going to allow us to grow. Grow spiritually. With love. We can agree to disagree, but we still going to have love. Amen. And, and that discipleship class in the morning gets, gets things kicked off. Now next Sunday, Sunday um, we got a matter of teaching. And, and, and it's part of of the of the grooming and equipping them for the ministry. We got a matter teaching next week, so y'all, I want everybody to come out next Sunday. Also, it was something else I had on my mind, and I forget something. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm past. I'm, I'm over sixty now. Back to school next Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next Sunday we're gonna have a back to school. Um, we're just gonna give away some some things to our children. Um, I know they started last week and this week, but it's never too late. You can always use it. Amen. Y'all charge that to my head and not my heart. I'll jump on it and, and do me a committee next year, and we'll just get this thing going. Amen. And Cartwright, I want you to get the grill out the house next, next Sunday. I'm about two or three pack of hot dogs. Man, Maud, I know you say we love to eat, but Lord, no, that, that's just good fellowship. I want to feed these children some hot dogs and let them know how much we love them, okay? No, they ain't getting no ribs and chicken. Now. I ain't going to work my deacon to death like that. Amen. We're going to have some hot dogs, chips, and drink. That's it. Amen. Amen. Also, 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 I love y'all. That's all I'm going to say. Listen, <laughs> cast your cares upon the altar. Cast your cares upon the altar because Jesus cares for you. Carl Sankton in here? We'll call that, y'all. In the back. Come here, Carl. I want to stand by you this morning. Cut right. I want all those who need prayer. And I ain't going to tell you his business, but I just want to stand by Carl. I love Carl. We're going to have prayer this morning. 
Come on, you stand by me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh. Cast your cares upon the altar. Cast your cares upon the altar. Minister Brian gonna give us a short prayer. Cause he's about ready to preach. I know he is, but we don't preach now. We <laughs> I want you to live by our sick, our misunderstood, our spiritually sick, our physically sick. And just pray for continued growth for this church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, Weezy, come get by your hub. My singleton girl. Let's come over there. Okay. Let us pray. Our Father, our Father, our sustainer, our keeper, our provider, our way maker. Lord, we come humbly before your throne right now. First of all, God, to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. Oh, God, healing the hole in our souls. In the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, we're asking right now, Lord God, that you touch. Touch, God, I was sick and shut in. Touch those, Father God, who are not able to do for themselves right now. Those who don't know, oh God, you for the part of their sins. Touch now. Lord God, now we ask that you spill a special anointing on this altar, on this altar call, on everyone that's standing under the sound of my voice. Father God, touch them at their points of need. Father God, touch now. Lord God, whatever they're in need of, Lord God, that child who's lost, in the name of Jesus, that child who won't do right, in the name of Jesus, that job that has not happened, in the name of Jesus, those finances that have not showed up yet, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over it all right now, and we count it done, in the name of Jesus. Touch now, God, anoint afresh. Touch now, anoint afresh. Touch our travels, oh Lord God, as we depart. Oh God, touch in a mighty way. Have your perfect way now. And Lord God, Brother Singleton, whatever the need is, God, whatever it is, oh God, whatever it is, I plead the blood of Jesus over it because we know that the blood still has its power. We know, Lord God, that you can do it from on high. Oh God, you said when the Holy Ghost come, we'll have power from on high. So adorn us now. Anoint us now. Give us what we need. Give him what he needs in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you now. Pastor told me not to be long, Lord. You know, I love to call on your name. So we thank you now. We just thank you. That's our prayer. In the mighty, matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 And amen. Amen. All right, now, the last thing I want to say before they can cut right close aside in prayer is our revival starts tomorrow. And the revival going to begin with you. This is our revival, so we ask that you support our revival. Amen? Amen. Bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow night.
comes in the morning. Our gracious, kind, and heavenly Father, we come to you this morning just to say thank you. Thank you for all the blessings that you have installed in us today. Thank you for the message that we have received today. And let it not go unfold. Let it be used in the building of your kingdom. As we depart this place, but never from your heart, we bless everyone with traveling graces. In God's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Let the church, let the church say amen. Ooh, yeah. So let the church.